Hi, I didn't get dressed up today. I was doing renovations again and got my wrinkly work shirt on. So, uh, but I'm not here to talk about my wardrobe, am I? <laughs> I uh, was thinking about some of the things that I've done uh, in my pursuit uh, of my dream. And I think a guy named Kiyosaki or Kawasaki, maybe Kawasaki like the motorcycle, uh, wrote a book called Selling the Dream. And uh, one of the things he said is if you have a dream, if you have something that you really believe in and you want to do, you're going to have to become like an evangelist to sell the dream. Uh, he said uh, one of the things that he recommended was to go to the Billy Graham School of Evangelism, uh, which was, I think, four days and I think something real crazy like $35. He said you have to put up with the, the real uh, strong Christians, but he said you can learn a lot there. And... <laughs> So, honest to God, I signed up for the Billy Graham School of Evangelism. It was going on up in Dallas. I was traveling, but still basing out of Houston. And uh, it was an experience, I must say that. It was uh, four or five days. I, I can't exactly remember how long it was. It, the tuition wasn't that expensive. The hotel was a little expensive. But I... I don't. I didn't do that well <laughs> there. Uh, I spent a lot of time by myself, uh, uh, wondering why I had done it. Uh, I didn't get the evangelical zeal that I guess I should have. But I was in standing in line for the lunch one time. It was in a big hotel, so they had a buffet, and I was talking to people. And uh, years ago here in Switzerland, a black American musical called Bubbling Brown Sugar came through and it was many black people when my daughter was six or seven at the time and we took her to it and then we waited outside the theater and asked these people as they came out to sign the poster and one of the women was signing the poster and we got talking. She said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a chiropractor. And she said, you are not. And I said, yeah, I am. She said, oh, my God. She said, I've been praying for a chiropractor for uh, months now. I get these headaches. And I said, well, you know, invite anybody from the theater uh, and to come along. I'll work on you. Here's the address. And So I worked on her. And then a couple of days later, we were out on the Lake of Zurich. We're on a boat. And we were with this gal. And I looked at her. I said, what's up? She said, oh, I've got one of my headaches again. Mia who I said was about six years old, who had got the autographs, walked out of the cabin of the boat and said, I said, Mia, can you do something about this lady's headache? And she said, yeah. And she touched the lady's head and then sat down and we started eating lunch. And I said, is that it? And she said, that's all she needs. And this woman started looking around and she said, no, nah, my headache's gone. And so then about four months later, we got a handwritten letter from her. She was traveling Europe. And she said uh, that her headaches had not returned since my daughter touched her on the head. So I'm telling this story in line, in the lunch line. And this southern woman whose husband was a reverend said, Where do you suppose that force or that power came from? And I said, You know, I don't know, but I, I sure hope it stays with her for all her life. And then they both looked at me completely mystified and turned their backs on me. And I missed the cue, I guess. I was supposed to say the dead Jewish kid with his holes in his hands, but I, I missed the cue. So I've done some things that I've uh, thought afterwards, hmm, why did I do that? <laughs>